getaways. On today's show, we're going to take you to Michigan's newest scenic byway. It's going to start in St. Ignis and run over west to Manistique. We are in St. Ignis right now, and you're going to see some of the sites. We're here at Castle Rock. We're up high, beautiful view. You can see some of the sites we're going to look at as we go along. Behind me is Mackinac Island. You've got the town of St. Ignis. You've got the Mackinac Bridge that's out here. We'll follow through there. Head west, down along the Lake Michigan shoreline, all the way to Manistique. We've got a lot of surprises for you and a lot of fun, so stay with us. A common phrase is, you are not up north until... Well, today's show completes the phrase, you are not up north until you have taken the scenic byway at the top of Lake Michigan. It is awe-inspiring in its beauty, the majesty of Lake Michigan, and the many points of interest along the way. You are not up north until you watch today's show and take the scenic byway with us. Another panoramic view of Lake Huron, Mackinac Island, and the surrounding area is yours for a small entrance fee and a lot of stamina as you make your way to the top of Castle Rock, three miles north of St. Ignace on I-75. When you arrive, you are greeted by Paul Bunyan and his Blue Ox Babe. After a picture with them, Take the outdoor staircase to rise nearly 200 feet above sea level. The attraction is open seven days a week from early May to mid-October. Whether you are a youper or a troll, you're proud of the mighty Mac. A youper lives above the Mackinac Bridge, a troll under it. Still the longest suspension bridge in the Western Hemisphere, when you approach it, you feel either excitement or apprehension. There is no need for apprehension, as more than 931,000 tons of concrete were used in its construction, and it is constantly maintained, as are the steel portions. There are more than 100,000 people who cross the bridge every month, but if you cannot drive yourself, you can make a call to the Mackinac Bridge Authority and have one of its employees drive for you. There are about five people a day who cannot make this trip without assistance. Now on the scenic byway trip that we're taking, technically the first stop is up at Capsule Rock, which is right down the road, but most people coming from the south are going to be crossing this spot too, and that's the Mackinac Bridge, and that also is a stop along the way. There's a nice park just over the other side of the bridge here where you can pull down and take some photographs. Of course, you're going to get a good look at it when you come across by a car, but uh, today I'm going out with Ned and Ned McClellan, and Ned is... Uh, maintenance supervisor here and he's not even going to show us the bridge he's going to take us to the top and Ned that looks like a long way up there yeah it's uh, 552 foot to the top Wow yeah uh, it's uh, we'll take an elevator ride first and then we'll uh, go through a couple ladders and through a couple holes and uh, we'll come out on the top okay we're gonna give you a whole new look at this bridge so what do you say we uh, start up there and uh, we'll talk more about it when we get there Anytime we're ready. All right, let's do it. There is very little as thrilling as crossing the bridge, no matter how many times you have done it. You may end up flying eye level with a seagull, spotting Lake Michigan freighters laden with ore headed downbound, or riding high in the water going to pick up a load of stone. There are the fabulous ferry boats going between the mainland and island with rooster tails streaming from the stern. Of course, the best view is that from the top of the bridge. It's not a tourist attraction that you can get a ticket for, but enjoy Tom's daring dash to the top. Well, as you can probably tell, we've made our way to the top of the towers here. Uh, if you were driving down the road, you could probably see us standing up here. We've got our vests on, so we're pretty visible to the people down below. Give me an idea of some of the things you have to do to maintain this. Uh, well, we do uh, we do beam repair. Uh, we do uh, we have to unwrap the cable, do some cable inspections. We paint the cables. Uh, we have our own spot painting crew here that uh, we clean up uh, spot rust and uh, and paint over it. Uh, we have to wash all the sand off the bridge from uh, every year. We don't use salt. Uh, okay. We use to protect the steel. Uh, well, then we got to get that sand off of there because it collects moisture. So. Uh, through and wash the entire bridge every single spring. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People think about washing the car or cleaning up the house. How would you like to do this five mile span of bridge and have to clean the whole thing? That's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. While traveling the scenic byway, there are many opportunities to safely pull over, get out of your vehicle, grab your phone, camera, and binoculars, 
to take in resplendent views of the lake, islands, and points of interest like the Gross Cap and the St. Helens Island Overlook, eight miles west of St. Ignace. We've stopped now at just a roadside park. It's a nice little park. It's very scenic. You can see out into northern Lake Michigan back here. Um, great spot to pull in, have a picnic, relax for a few. There's some pit toilets here. Uh, it's also an historical spot, but uh, it's just a great little spot along the way as you're going down the scenic byway that you can pull off and take a little break. As you head west out of St. Ignace on this tour along the scenic byway, you're going to come to a series of overlooks that you can see out here into Lake Michigan. In fact, behind me right now, you can see an island. That's St. Helena Island. A lot of the ships would stop there coming by here to pick up wood and other supplies. There was also on the beach down below us right now, it was a fishing village that was started sometime in the early 1800s. And it thrived for almost 30 years around here. So this is one of the sites, so it's just a beautiful spot to come out to. We've seen a passing freighter go through it. You can see on the uh, east side of the island out there, there's a little lighthouse that sits out there too. So just, just a nice little rest stop, picnic areas, bathrooms, uh, good place to pull off and take a look at the beauty. Whether you have ever had a pasty in the Upper Peninsula or not, be sure you check your pronunciation before ordering. If you say, pasty with a long A, pasty, <laughs> You'll be spotted as a troll immediately. Coming down the scenic byway, you're gonna see a lot of beautiful spots, a lot of places you can stop along the way to, to look at these areas. But you're gonna need some food as you go along, and there's no better place to stop than here at Lado's where you can get the UP pasty. I'm with Lynette who works here, and Lynette, tell us a little bit about the pasty itself. Okay, well the original pasty is beef, potato, onion, and rutabaga, all inside a pastry crust and then it originated over in Cornwall, England. Okay. And the miners would take them with them in their lunch box boxes because once they got there and were getting to the lunch mm -hmm. break, it was still warm. So it just was okay. one of those types of things. They could carry it right with them down into yeah. the mine then. Yeah, and still have a warm lunch whenever they got to it. All right, well, we're gonna stop here. We're getting some, we're gonna order some um, because you know what, you can buy pasties anywhere today, but you cannot get the original Upper Peninsula pasty. So make sure you make this one of your stops going along the scenic byway. All right. You ready to eat? I am. We're picking up our pasties, getting a little bit of dinner, coming down the road. We thought, you know what, let's take it down the road with us. Let's find another area to pull off, a scenic area, a beautiful area that you can come into, see what we can find to go there and eat dinner. Well, we came down the road. We came into an area known as the Hiawatha National Forest. This is part of the National Forest up here. Uh, it's right along the lake itself and just south of US 2. So it's easy in, easy out. There's a little campground that's down this way. Over here is the day use area. A great spot to pull off whether you want to stay the night or just want to stop like we did, have a little something to eat, and uh, just enjoy the scenery. The Mackinac Bridge is not the only anticipated bridge when heading for the scenic byway. 25 miles northwest of St. Ignace, between Epiphet and Brevort, is the Cut River Bridge built in 1947. It is a cantilevered steel deck bridge with a long staircase that heads down to the scenic Cut River Valley. We're at a place known as the Cut River Bridge. Now, one of the nice things is you can stop here at this bridge, and it's very scenic, but uh, you, there's different ways to see it. And as you can see, I'm coming down off the road itself. I can go down here, kind of go underneath it. I can follow it across the bridge. There's barriers set up. If you want to walk it, there's also a stairway that'll take you down to the very bottom and a little bridge that crosses the creek down there. A pretty amazing place. Uh, you figure that the bridge is about 640 feet across, something around that, and then it's about 147 feet down. So it's it, there's a big, almost a canyon that comes down here, and hence the name Cut River, because it has cut right through the sand and rock through here, and leads just on the other side here out to Lake Michigan. 
Here's what looks like just under the bridge. And as you can see, there's a stairway coming down the other side, same type we came down here. And if uh, somebody came down, they'd be looking straight across at us. Now, as you can see, the big girders that are here, but you can't really see down to the bottom. There is a stairway that actually leads to the bottom. It's a lot of steps. Come on here, and this is one of those stops along the scenic byway that you got to make. And if you come up here in the fall, woo, you can kind of imagine. You can see a lot of the trees in the background now. In the fall, it is spectacular. Well, we've walked over to the other side of the bridge. You can kind of look across from here. You look up. That's where we're going next. You can walk along that edge up there. Down in here, the creek's down there, and believe it or not, it's dried up right now. Now, it isn't that way all, all year long, but right now it's dried up, and that's probably why it takes a million years to cut a path through here like that. Seven miles east of Nobbin Way, there is the Hog Island Point State Park, with camping on a first-come, first-served basis. The shoreline over the next few miles ranges from rocky to sandy, but it is the ever-changing lake, sandbars, and tides that make this an interesting place for kayaking and swimming. After you leave the Hog Island Campground and continue down US 2, your next stop needs to be at, where else? The Hog Island Country Store for another delicious snack. Smoked whitefish. Not just any smoked whitefish, but whitefish so fresh that it practically jumps into your mouth. We've been here as you can see in the pictures on the walls, this place is, uh, this building actually is about 100 years old this year. No kidding. Yeah. This used to be in uh, Wilwyn Lumber Camp back in the day. And then the gentleman, the original owner, bought the building and moved it to Rexton. They moved it to Rexton, and I think it was a private uh, residence at one time. And then um, he made it into a store. And then he built his six cabins there by the store because that's where the main throwaway was. They put US-2 in and then he knew that his business was going to slide a little bit, you know, okay. you might say. And um, so he bought this piece of property in the winter time. He moved it. It's been here for, I believe, like 75 of years. It's a nice little place, well-kept place. Thank you. I really Thank like you. it. And you come in here, very neat in here, and you have... Uh, just about a little bit of everything. A little bit of this, a little bit of that, not a lot of any one thing. There it Except is. Except for You're, fish and pasties. And, and that's one of the reasons yeah. we stopped. Now, we've stopped and getting maple syrup, and we're getting uh, pasties, and we're getting all kinds of things. We see the smoked fish, and we always yeah. stop somewhere for smoked fish. Yes, so it's the so best. We that's what keeps here. me open. That's, that's good <laughs> stuff. And I see you have a case down here. Maybe I we do. Take Thank a look at that. Sure. We have... Um, whitefish, lake trout, and salmon for lakes. Um, white, whitefish. He's ready to eat. Pull the skin back towards his belly, pull the meat off. I like it like many people do on a cracker. I was going to say crackers yeah. are good with this. Yep. And um, it's a nice, healthy snack. Yes, it is. <laughs> that is a good thing about it. Yeah. it and really, it, it really is a great snack along the way when you're going along the road. To, Pick up one of these and, and some crackers, you head down to the picnic area, you stop and, and you can sit on the shoreline and just, just yeah, enjoy it. Yeah, I got it. picnic tables out. Yep, there we got it. There you go. You know when you are in the Upper Peninsula and traveling along the scenic byway because there are distances between towns and facilities. Whether you need the restrooms or not, the halfway rest stop offers a scenic overlook of Lake Michigan in the midst of a lushly forested setting. We're coming along from uh, St. Ignace to Manistique. You've got about an 80 mile drive that goes along here. About halfway in between is a rest stop. And this is one where you can go in, you got flush toilets and, and mirrors and sinks and so forth. This is just a, something a little bit nicer. And as you, as you can see though, it's an actual log home or log cabin that it was. And uh, picnic area here, um, also a scenic overlook. Uh, right up behind me. So it's just just another good stop along the way if you need to use a nice bathroom This is the place you want to come to Across from the rest stop I told you there was an overlook here and it's uh, you're more down on the beach But it's a nice little platform that comes out here. You've got a telescope that's out here You also have a picnic table and just spots that you can sit down relax and look out at the beautiful scenery that's here it's a beautiful 
evening out here too. As we arrived in Nobbin Way, we were fortunate to meet one of the main men behind this scenic byway. We've come about halfway now down the scenic byway. We're in a little town called Nobbin Way. I am with Bruce Guftison here. and Bruce uh, is retired, does a little realty on the side, but uh, you're kind of uh, in involved in this top of the lake and the scenic byway. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, a group of us started looking at where in Michigan do we have really beautiful highway to drive by. And we started looking at, started with this uh, 40 miles at 42 miles that we have between here and St. Ignace and all the vistas and all the scenic overlooks over the road, mm -hmm. over the lake rather. With an average snowfall of over 200 inches, it stands to reason that Michigan's Upper Peninsula would be home to the Snowmobile Museum. It's a very interesting and fun stop along the byway. Come along the scenic byway, you're going to pass through some little towns. One of them is Nobbin Way, and we couldn't help but see a sign out there that says Snowmobile Museum. And Charlie, tell us about some of the unique sleds that you have. Oh, there's very unique ones. There's uh, some of one of one, one of two, one of eight, one of nine, some made right here in Michigan, one of five, right behind the camera is one of five, right made right here in Michigan in a guy's back garage. Um, we got one over here made in uh, quarry, stone quarry here in Gulliver. That's, uh, he was a machinist at the quarry. He built five machines himself. And then we've got, of course, the, all the brand named ones also. Um, you know, it was conquering the snow. That, you know, we were tired of walking, snowshoeing, skiing. How can we conquer the snow? And eventually they conquered the snow and look what we have today. And you know, you're thinking, well, summertime, we're up here and we're going down the scenic byway, but I'll tell you what, there's something here. It does, you don't have to be a snowmobiler to come in here and take a look at some of these some of these contraptions, contraptions that you actually see. This is a real part of history and a great little stop along the way. The museum is also the headquarters for the Scenic Byway Committee and the place where the dedication and ribbon cutting ceremonies for the newest Scenic Byway were held. One, two. Shazam! <laughs> Along your tour, you might want to stop for a sweet treat at the UP Sugar Shack, right on US 2. Only real maple syrup here with low calorie, good for you sugar. Stop in for a treat or experience how maple syrup is made. They make pure maple syrup and the stuff is actually made fresh almost daily. Um, at least this is what I've heard. We're going to go in, we're going to talk to the owner, find out just a little bit more about what goes on here and what people can see when they stop. Come on in, I'll show you. I bought the maple business from my parents, moved it up here from uh, the Traverse City area. Okay. And got a 40 acre sugar bush here that I uh, do all the tapping and draw the sap in, process it here in my, in my sugar house. And what makes it so much better than the stuff you buy um, off the shelf? Well, first of all, there is actually nutrients. It's actually good for you. It's uh, the only thing we do between you and the tree is remove water. So it's a natural sweetener. I have a, a grade of cooking syrup, which is the end of season stuff that is really dark, strong flavored. Maybe a little bit of an aftertaste to it called a buddy flavor. But when you use it in cooking like uh, baked beans or glazing a ham, you'll get a real nice maple flavor out of it. Just east of Manistique is the town of Gulliver, where you'll want to stop for a visit to the Lake Michigan shoreline through the cedar tree-lined paths. The wind-worn cedars, the aged silver-gray trees, are a backdrop to some of the most pristine and humble beaches along Lake Michigan. There is fine fishing at Gulliver Lake and McDonald Lake for some pike, walleye, and panfish. Sichua Point Lighthouse was built to light the way for the increasing number of vessels carrying the iron ore that was being shipped out of Escanaba, Michigan. Sichua Point Lighthouse is now a community park for everyone to enjoy. The necessity of the lighthouse is seen as a huge limestone shoal reaches out from the shore and cuts through the clear water to almost 100 yards from shore. The shoal, plus the land mass of the point itself, adds up to a very dangerous area for navigators. 
The lighthouse grounds are well maintained. Making the visit to the lighthouse even more interesting is the fact that all of the original outbuildings are still standing, including explosive storehouses and a fog signal building, which now houses a gift shop and museum. The museum is open from Memorial Day through mid-October, seven days a week, from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. There are fascinating items in the museum, including a well-preserved dugout canoe, one of the rarest finds to be uncovered in the Midwest. During your trek along the scenic byway, you'll be amazed when you stop at the big springs named Kitchity Kippy. The big springs are located just west of Manistique at Palms Book State Park. The big spring is 200 feet across and 40 feet deep. Over 10,000 gallons a minute gush from many fissures in underlying limestone. But it's the self-propelled raft with the glass bottom that makes this crystal clear attraction so amazing. Trout and schools of other fish are clearly seen as you float over top, as is the bottom of the spring. Then along the shore and swimming next to you are a variety of waterfowl. A picture is worth a thousand words, so be sure you have your camera, as this place will leave you speechless. Not far from the Big Springs is Thompson State Fish Hatchery. It opened in 1922 and produces Chinook salmon, steelhead, and walleye for both inland and Great Lakes waters. Located on M149 in Manistique, it's open daily from 7.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Come in to enjoy a short video on the operation of the history or take the self-guided tour with interpretive signage. As we approach the end of our trip, but to some it may be the beginning, the wonderful little city of Manistique. All your time will be filled with a casino, great places to stay, good food, and great people. And speaking of staying at a great place, Manistique opens its newest attraction, the Manistique Lakeshore Campground, located right on Lake Michigan. Sheila, you have something brand new here in Manistique that I think these people are gonna love. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? We certainly do, and we're glad to be the scenic byway, one of the reciprocants of it, and to be the ending point. At the ending point is the Downtown Development Authority's brand new campground. We have full hookups, every site is full hookup um, except for the tent sites, and there are 50 full hookup sites, and that's water, sewer, electric, Wi-Fi, cable TV, and it's, <laughs> everything. <laughs> yeah, it's everything. It's, it's a paved road in, and um, poured cement slabs, a fire ring, and a picnic table and just about anything that anyone could want in a campground and more. I, I, I know, so you have building over here, restrooms, showers, mm -hmm. uh, laundry too? We do. Really is a great campground. We're right here at the terminus, we're right here in Manistique. You can come down here if you like camping, you wanna do a little camping here. As she said, you can go right into town, you've got access to all the stores and restaurants, plus you've got this beautiful area just to, just to play in. This is the end of the journey down the US-2 Scenic Byway right here in Manistique. We're right at the campground. You look out on Lake Michigan, which we've been following the whole way. You've got that lighthouse in the background. I can't think of a better way to finish. I hope you have a chance to get up here, make this trip too. You won't be disappointed. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week. For 92 miles, we have traveled the top of the Lake Scenic Byway and have only brought you some of its highlights. The history, the beauty, the melding of the past with the present, the sights and sounds, the flavor of the local foods and people provide you a kaleidoscope of experiences for many seasons of travel here. Please follow the instructions on the screen for more information, message us on Facebook about your experience here, and be sure to say hello as we will be visiting often ourselves.